despite having American weaponry and armor at their disposal. The Safawis were scared to meet death and did not have the nerve to continue the fight. Propaganda. Captured Iraqi soldiers are rounded up in vehicles in these videos, forced to dig their own mass graves, executed then at point-blank range. Another video shows the violent battle for the Syrian city of Kobani that we've been covering for so long, using a drone to highlight where suicide attacks were carried out. In other disturbing images, ISIS terrorists can be seen throwing a man accused of being gay off the top of a building and then stoning him to death. ISIS tactics are considered so extreme they evoked revulsion from, of all places, an al-Qaeda affiliate. A top leader of al-Qaeda in Yemen, which just slaughtered American hostage Luke Summers, held a press conference in which he described these beheadings and other acts as barbaric. He accused ISIS of driving a wedge between jihadi factions. David Gartenstein Ross is a senior fellow with the Foundation for Defense of Democracies and joins me live. David, al-Qaeda is in Yemen is a savage group. They released a, a hostage video of Luke Summers. They killed Luke Summers. We're told during that rescue attempt, how can they attempt to take a high road with ISIS? They're taking a high road not so much because they're good guys, obviously, uh, but rather for strategic reasons. Uh, Al-Qaeda had a very bad experience, actually, from ISIS's predecessor, Al-Qaeda in Iraq, which was known for its beheadings, known for its overt brutality, and that ended up creating, among other things, a massive uprising against it, and it diminished Al-Qaeda's brand worldwide. For strategic reasons, they don't want to engage in the overt savagery that uh, ISIS does, although they have no problem with uh, engaging in savagery. And it's also overt savagery against Muslims that they really have the issue with, right? Not overt sav savagery against Jews or Christians. Um, yeah, again, it's, it's a little bit of a complex issue uh, in, in that way, uh, because they, they do engage in overt savagery against other Muslims. Right. Um, but even, uh, for example, ISIS's attack on the Yazidis, it didn't serve uh, any strategic purpose. The Yazidis um, are, are not only non-Muslim, uh, they're not even going to be considered dhimmis, people who could have a pact to continue practicing their own faith under Islamic law. Uh, but ISIS decided to engage in a genocidal campaign against this group that posed no military threat to them. Al-Qaeda probably wouldn't have made the same decision, in part because um, they're not as obsessed with you know, carrying out and, and showing their ability to inflict massive pain on a population right now. Instead, they have a bit of a longer-term game than ISIS does. ISIS keeps releasing these propaganda videos. What are U.S. intelligence officials gaining from them, if anything? Well, for one thing, um, you know, faces, uh, voice recognition, it, 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 they've shown a number of the same figures uh, repeatedly. In some cases, they've shown their faces, and this um, is helpful. Uh, secondly, their location can be pinpointed from these videos. And then third, looking at the narrative arc that they're putting forward, they're constantly releasing things. Uh, they clearly have very good media capabilities, something that other terrorist groups are going to try to mirror. Uh, these are all things that the United States can glean in looking at the videos. And, and David, in one of the videos, ISIS terrorists are forcing shop owners in Mosul, Iraq, to shut down their stores, head to prayers. Is that evidence at all of ISIS starting to win hearts and minds, or are these Iraqis just doing what they need to do so they don't get killed? It, look, it's, it's always difficult to say from a propaganda video, and particularly when you have um, totalitarian rule such as ISIS is. Uh, I think, though, that aside from the video, we can see that increasing pockets of resistance are uh, forming against ISIS in places like Mosul and Fallujah. It's not like the awakening 06 to 07. They don't have a major sponsor, so they're not a major strategic threat right now, but they're certainly a big thorn in their side. Fascinating. David Gardenstein-Ross, thank you so much. Really appreciate it, as always.